the personal work of Jesus Christ, along with the message of the cross and the triune nature of God, have become endangered species in the American church on the verge of extinction. You may be offended by what you hear, but love requires the truth. If I don't put the first table of the law first, love the Lord my God with all my heart, mind, and strength, and I cannot fulfill the second table of the law, which is to love you, my neighbor, as myself. In doing this, I am taking a stand. And if you stand for something, you're bound to offend someone. And before you say being offensive isn't being Christian, I would point out that Jesus Christ doesn't fit into America's politically correct cultural Christianity that tolerates heresy and opposition to Scripture. Ephesians 5.11 have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Matthew 23, verses 27 and 28. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Matthew 23:33 You snakes you brood of vipers how will you escape being condemned to hell Mark 11:15 through 19 On reaching Jerusalem Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. Make no mistake about it, Jesus Christ was offensive. He was controversial. John 8:59. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and passed by. The most popular ministers in America are those who claim gain is godliness. 1 Timothy 6.5 Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth suppose that gain is godliness. From such withdraw yourself. Revealing that the American church is full of people who listen to those who tell them what they want to hear. 2 Timothy 4.3 for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. People like the late Kenneth Hagin, the late Oral Roberts, Joyce Meyer, Joel Osteen, Creflo Dollar, Paula White, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, Bill Johnson, Rick Warren, Paul and Janice Crouch, Mike Murdoch, Fred Price, Jesse Duplantis, Robert Tilton. Is it wrong to call heretics out by name? 1 Timothy 1.20 Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, to be taught not to blaspheme. Turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, the 16th chapter, beginning with verse 13. Follow along, if you would, in your Bible. The 16th chapter and the 13th verse of the Gospel of Matthew. The title of this message is, Who Do You Say I Am? Matthew 16, 13-17 When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man but by my Father in heaven. Now people had impressions of Jesus Christ that led them to identify him as John the Baptist, as the prophet Elijah, and still others just as the prophet Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But Jesus wanted to know, Who do you say I am? Jesus asked this question to you and I today, just as he asked his disciples in ancient Israel. And today, just as then, people have impressions of Jesus Christ that lead them to identify him as just a prophet, such as in Judaism and Islam. Secularists identify him as unnecessary to the affairs of the state or in formal education. Humanists identify him as a superstition of the unthinking, as irrational. Epicurists identify him as contrary to the highest good, being pleasure. In universities today, Jesus Christ is dismissed as a myth, 
a fable that hinders the intellectual growth that higher education requires. Evolutionists consider him to be a lie, and evolutionists who know that he is a historical figure consider him to be a liar. In Jesus' own day on earth, he was identified as a blasphemer, who people picked up stones to kill when he identified himself with the Tetragrammaton of Exodus 3.14 in John 8.58 and 59. Tetragrammaton is a Greek word meaning four letters or consisting of four letters, which are the consonants that compose the name God gave Moses, since classical Hebrew has no vowels. John the Baptist identified him as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. A rich young ruler identified him as a good teacher. A master of a synagogue identified him as one who breaks sacred law. A Pharisee identified him as a teacher from God. Oppressors of the poor stealing in the temple identified him as someone to fear, seeking a way to kill him. And a thief condemned to death identified him as salvation. As a child, I received instruction both in the Bible and the Talmud. I am a Jew. I am enthralled by the luminous figure of the Nazarene. No one can read the Gospels without feeling the actual presence of Jesus. His personality pulsates in every word. No myth is filled with such life. Albert Einstein I know men, and I tell you that Jesus is not a man. Superficial minds see a resemblance between Christ and the founders of empires and gods of other religions. That resemblance does not exist. There is between Christianity and other religions the distance of infinity. Napoleon Bonaparte I am an historian. I am not a believer, but I must confess as a historian that this penniless preacher from Nazareth is irrevocably the very center of history. Jesus Christ is easily the most dominant figure in all history. H. G. Wells A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon. Or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God, but let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. C.S. Lewis The question for all of us today is who do you say Jesus Christ is? Today, information is at your fingertips like never before. You can learn about beliefs from the comfort of your own home without needing to step foot in a temple or to approach a believing member. You can learn about great religious teachers, teachers like Prince Gautama Siddhartha, the founder of Buddhism, Master Kong, the founder of Confucianism, Lao Tzu, the founder of Taoism, Zoroaster, the founder of Zoroastrianism, Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, William Miller, the founder of the Millerites, Ellen G. White, the founder of the Seventh-day Adventist, Charles Russell, the founder of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, Mary Baker Eddy, the founder of Christian Science, L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology. There is no shortage of religions or founders of them, yet Jesus Christ stands alone, set apart from all the rest of them. Why? Because he claimed to be God. You may say there are many who have claimed to be God, that there are many today who say they are God, or even that you or I can claim to be God, and this is true. But what does this tell us? That a claim is cheap, that it in fact is worthless without evidence. What sets Jesus Christ apart from all religious figures and charlatans is that he not only claimed to be God, but that he proved it in his historical crucifixion and resurrection. In anthropology, the science of the comparative study of human societies and cultures we find that all human societies and cultures have had deities, from Polynesian to European, from Asia to the Americas, from Australian to African, and from pre-recorded history to the present day, humans have deities. Blaise Pascal, a 17th century mathematician, philosopher, scientist, and theologian, wrote in Penzé's translated thoughts, What else does this craving and this helplessness proclaim but that there was once in mankind a true happiness of which all that now remains is the empty print and trace. This one tries in vain to fill with everything around them, seeking in things that are not there the help that they cannot find in those that are. Though no one can help since this infinite abyss can be filled only with an infinite and immutable object, in other words, by God himself, 
In the scientific disciplines of history, archaeology, and anthropology, we find humanity reaching out for a relationship with God. Everyone needs a relationship with Jesus. Humanity through religion is reaching out to God. Christianity, though, is not a religion. It is a relationship with God. In the message of the cross, we find what we cannot find in religion, God reaching out to us. Let us look at who and what Jesus identified himself as. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I and the Father are one. I am the resurrection and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys to death and hell. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. What does Scripture say about Jesus? Here we will use Scripture sets, Old and New Testament together. Uh, remember that Christianity is the fulfillment of Judaism. In Genesis 28:12, with John 1:51, he is the bridge to heaven. In Isaiah 7:14, with Luke 1:34 and 35, he was born of a virgin. In Isaiah 9:6, with John 1:14, he is human and divine. The man who is God. In Isaiah 56 and Matthew 27, 26 through 31, is his historical crucifixion prophesied over 400 years before it happened. In Isaiah 53, 3 through 7, and Luke 22, 41 through 44, he is the man of sorrows, bearing the sorrows of the world. In Jonah 1:17, with Matthew 12:40 is his historical death and resurrection and in Zechariah 12:10 with John 19:34 through 37 his body was pierced now we will look at what the new testament scripture says about Jesus in the gospel of John in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the word became flesh thomas a first century jew called jesus his lord and his god without rebuke from christ his rabbi Acts says that God purchased the church with his own blood. Philippians says of Jesus, being in very nature God, he didn't count equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man. Colossians says in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And in Hebrews, but of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. To recap, we see that from Jesus' disciples were varied responses as to who he is, including things that others said about him, just as you have heard uh, from others, including from those quoted in this message. One of Jesus' disciples answered from personal experience with him, which you also may or can through a relationship with him. In closing, we see in Scripture that Jesus Christ is 100% human, that he sleeps, for instance, in the boat in Mark 4.38. We see he thirsts in John 4.7. We see he hungers in Matthew 4.3. We see him suffering from sorrow in Mark 14.34. And he dies in Luke 23.46. We see also in Scripture that Jesus Christ is 100% deity or God. In John 1.1, 1, 1, we find that the Word was with God and that the Word is God. And that in John 1.14, the Word became flesh. In John 8.58, he identified himself as God. In Philippians 2.6-8, he was God who became a human being to die on the cross. In Colossians 2.9, in him the fullness of deity dwells bodily. And in Revelation 1.8, he is the Alpha and the Omega. In Revelation 2.8, he is the first and the last who died and came back to life. And in Revelation 22, 12, 13, and 16, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. We find in Jesus Christ the greatest mystery of all.
the man who is God, the infinite and the finite, God and humanity, one in Christ Jesus. Who and what Jesus is, as well as what he did, are the measuring rod for discerning his gospel from all other ones, and him from all other Christs. If you've heard the Holy Spirit speaking to you, offered to you as a privilege to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to speak to you on who Jesus Christ is, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to read Matthew 16:15 for 15 days. Please don't do this assignment out of obligation. That would be religious. This assignment can only be fulfilled out of desire. For desire is born out of relationship, and only then will the Spirit move in revelation. Obligation and desire are not synonymous. They are antonymous. Opposite poles, the difference and distance between religion and Christianity. Proverbs 14.12 says there is a way that seems right to someone, but it's in his death. In John 5.24, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life. Do you believe you already know who Jesus Christ is? Get ready for a new revelation. For you who have a relationship with Jesus Christ and have a desire for this assignment while doing it, listen for him to reveal himself to you. By doing this assignment, you are inviting the Holy Spirit to engage you and by looking and listening for him, you give God a medium to reveal himself to you through.